Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Today we're starting with the topic, Will There Be Art in Heaven? Now, before asking big questions like these, I always like to define my terms first, so let's begin with the definition of art. There are many definitions of the word art, with lots of them having to do with just anything that requires skill or learning. Branches of learning, jobs that require skill, and skills themselves are all considered arts. But when we use the term, we usually mean one of these two definitions. 4a. The conscious use of skill and creative imagination, especially in the production of aesthetic objects, also work so produced. 6. Decorative or illustrative elements in printed matter. So, in short, aesthetic objects or works, usually decorative or illustrative, this definition works well for the purposes of this topic. Now, the Bible drops many hints about some of the things that will be in heaven, but it doesn't list every detail of every form of art that will be present there. However, it does list at least one major art form, music. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and wonderful, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had overcome the beast and his image and the number of his name standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God, and singing the canticle of Moses, the servant of God, and the canticle of the Lamb, saying, Great and wonderful are thy works, O Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, O King of Ages. Revelation 15, 1-3 so we have here an image of people in heaven who face trials and overcome them, and who carry harps and sing. They sing specific songs while in heaven, producing art after a fashion. Now, there are some reasons why those in heaven would produce art in this way. To start with, because heaven is closer to God, and therefore closer to all the good things that he provides, everything that's good. Art is good, and therefore it must be present there. However, just because art is present doesn't mean people produce it. Surely, God can produce whatever art needs producing without any help, right? Well, yes, he can. However, that doesn't necessarily mean he does. God didn't need to rely on St. Paul to spread the news of the gospel and write numerous letters to the early church in various cities. He could have just appeared to all of them in person, but instead, he chose to involve human beings at every stage of spreading the news. As a consequence, the saints became more like Jesus because they shared part of his mission. In the same way, the saints in heaven also receive authority from God. And Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the seat of his majesty, you also shall sit on twelve seats, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew nineteen twenty-eight. Jesus, the judge, gives judging authority to his disciples, just as they've shared his mission on earth, so they share his heavenly role in heaven, to judge and rule. So it's not going too far to suggest that those in heaven also work with God in the creation of new and beautiful things in heaven, through the arts that he created for us to use. There is, of course, a difference between heavenly art and earthly art, since those in heaven, being fully united with the source of perfection, will produce perfect art, which isn't just designed to glorify themselves and isn't vulnerable to being ruined or monopolized like earthly art is. Also, it's reasonable to suppose that as many forms of art as exist here on earth, there are many, many more in heaven, since surely someone who can create the universe from nothing can come up with other ways for people to express their appreciation of the many good things he does for them. Next, how do we know that we have the right formula for baptism? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.